In this video, I'm going to be showing you 10 different ways you can use the underscore in Python. Now, the first way requires us to open up the Python console. And what we can do here is create a variable, or we can actually do a calculation. So we can do 10 plus 10, and it's going to return to us 20. Now, what the underscore does in the Python console is let us use the last result. So there it says 20, we can say 20 times underscore, and it's going to use the last result. And you can do this as much as you want. So you can say underscore divided by five, and we're going to get or times five, and we're going to get 2000. While this might not be such a popular case, since a lot of us do not use the Python console, it is still worth mentioning. A second way to use the underscore is to make your numbers much more readable. So for example, pretend you have some large number, and that's going to be of type integer, and it's going to be something such as a billion. At this point, I have no idea how many zeros I actually used and whether I actually created a billion. So in Python, you can actually use the underscore to format the number. And when you actually print the number, for example, if we type in print number, it's going to exclude the underscores. They're just there to help you visually understand the number you are writing. Thirdly, we can use it for unimportant values, such as if we have a value of 10, we can assign it to the underscore because it is unimportant. And this isn't really a use case for it. It's just to show you that we should, in theory, never use this underscore if we're assigning 10 to it. And I guess a better use case would be for underscore in range three. So each time we loop through the range, we're assigning a value to underscore. But since we don't really care about it, we're just going to use the underscore here. So now we can say print hello. And if everything goes well, it should print hello to the console three times. It is important to mention, though, that the underscore does work as a variable name. So if we print that, it's still going to print the numbers. But usually you use this as a convention if you do not want to use a value. The fourth example of doing this would be with a try and accept block. Here we can type in result equals one divided by zero. And obviously, this is going to give us a zero division error. So accept zero division error as underscore because we do not care about using the error message or the error in general. And here you can handle it, we can say handled. And now we are a pro Python developer. I'm just kidding, of course. But if you run this, it's going to run just fine. And we have this placeholder here that does absolutely nothing because we do not care about it. One of the more useful places to use an underscore is with unpacking tuples. So for example, here we have a sample tuple, and that's going to equal a tuple of one, two, three, and four. And now let's pretend we want to unpack this tuple. So we just want to get one and three back. So here we can type in a underscore b underscore, and that's going to equal the sample tuple. So that allows us to actually just retrieve the values of a and b. Of course, the underscore is going to be assigned the four because that's the last assigned variable. But it's going to keep our code much cleaner because we're not assigning random variables to random names that we have to keep track of later. So if we run that, we'll get one and three. And again, if we print the underscore, we should get four back. But next we have something a bit more interesting and let's pretend we have five elements here. And this is combining the underscore with an asterisk. So here we can say a, b, and in front of the underscore, we're going to add this asterisk, which is going to unpack all the values between A and B, which means we're only going to get back one and five. So that's a pretty neat tip if you just want to get the last two values. And if we don't print it, of course, we'll see nothing. So here we'll type in print A and B. And in the console, we'll get one and five back. And if you're curious, if you print the underscore now, you're going to get a list of the elements inside the middle section. For use case number seven, we're going to import from UUID, UUID4 to generate some UUIDs. And in this example, we're going to create a class called user. And it's going to have an initializer. And in this initializer, we're going to do something a bit special. We're going to type in self dot underscore ID, and that's going to equal a UUID four. So why did we add an underscore in front of ID? Well, the idea here is that we want ID to be protected, which means it should only be used in the current class and in subclasses, if anything. 
And in Python, this is merely a convention because it does not prevent anyone from using it outside the class or in subclasses, but it's still used as a convention. So here we can type in def get ID, which should also only be used in this class or in subclasses. And that's going to return self dot underscore ID. If we create an instance of this class, we say user is equal to user and we type in user and use dot notation, you'll notice that we're not going to get any suggestions from our code editor. Even if we want to get the ID, it's not going to show up. And most code editors will hide it from you because we've defined it to be protected. But it is very important to mention that if we type in get ID like that, and we actually print this, it's not going to prevent us from using that. If you actually want to prevent usage of it, outside of the class, we're going to have to create a private function or attribute. And to do this, you use the double underscore. And this is how you define a private attribute or a private function in Python, by using two underscores in front of an attribute name or in front of a function name. And if we try to use it now, it's not going to let us use it because Python performs something called name mangling. So instead of giving us back underscore underscore get ID, it does some funky magic and gives us something else back. So as you can see, if we try to get this ID using this private method, it's going to say that this does not exist. And to keep it short, name mangling just renames this function to something else. So it makes it harder for us to access it. It doesn't make it impossible. There are still ways to get this, but it just becomes a lot harder and just counterintuitive. But moving on to use case number nine and this has to do with using reserved names. Pretend you want to name a variable if, for whatever reason, you just want to name it if. It's impossible because it is reserved by Python. So something you can do is add an underscore after the keyword that you want to use as a variable name. And it works with anything. You can say class is class or whatever you want. It can also be string is string. And we were able to use those keywords now because we added a slight modification. The final way I'm going to show you that you can use underscores is with Dunder methods. And Dunder methods are just these special methods with double underscores on each side that have inbuilt functionality, which can be overwritten. And the best way to describe this is to show you. So first we're going to create an initializer and right there immediately we are using a Dunder method that initializes the class. And you will type in self dot ID is equal to UUID four. And I guess I have to import that again. So we'll do that import UUID four. And this time we're going to add some special functionality using Dunder methods. Because right now, if we type in fruit is equal to fruit, and we print this fruit, we get this ugly mess back. So what we can do is define a Dunder method for the string representation. And here we're going to return the formatted string of fruit and the UUID, so self.id. Now the next time we run this, we're going to get something much more readable regarding the fruit that we have. And Dunder methods definitely deserve another video, but you can do so much with them. So if you type in, for example, def integer, you can also tell the program what to do to this class if you want to turn it into an integer. And in this case, we're just going to return the number of four. So now we can create some very funky code. We can say print the value or the sum of 10 plus the integer of fruit. So we can now convert this fruit type into an integer. And this is wrong. It has to be the double underscore or the dunder integer. So with that dunder method, you're now telling the program, okay, this is what happens when you want to turn it into an integer. And when you run it, it is not happy because I did not close this part here or I removed it for some reason. But now if you run it again, you're going to get 14 because 10 plus the integer of fruit returns 14 since the integer converts fruit to four every time we use the integer method. But anyways, those were 10 different ways you could use the underscore. And I mean, I thought it was kind of silly to mention that you can use it in variable names, for example, var two to separate words, you can use the underscore, of course, but that's common knowledge. So in reality, these were 11 ways you could use it, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comment section whether you knew all of this or if you learned something new. But with all that being said, 
As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.